In June 1942, aiming to crush the Soviet army and secure the Eastern Front, Adolf Hitler launched Operation Case Blue. The German plan called for a renewed blitzkrieg to seize the oil fields of the Caucasus, vital for choking off the Soviets and injecting new blood into the Nazi war machine. It was to be one of the most consequential clashes of World War II, yet both Hitler and Joseph Stalin seemed intent on outdoing each other to see who could lose it first. Stalin would play his opening error before the German offensive even began. After the Soviets intercepted the full plans of Case Blue from a downed aircraft, Stalin, in his paranoid wisdom, suspected deception and ignored the critical intelligence. Not to be outdone, Hitler countered with his own mistake of remarkable hubris. Following Stalin's failure to prepare a defense, Hitler underestimated the difficulty of the remaining campaign and divided his forces, sending one towards the oil fields as planned and the other towards Stalingrad as a simultaneous objective. Through these combined blunders, the stage was set for a moment that would change everything about the war. News of Victory Joseph Stalin was unsure of German intentions, and thus he ordered a preemptive attack in the Orel area, but the Germans surprised them with their own offensive on June 28, 1942. Operation Fall Blau involved two Panzer armies, three infantry armies, and the second Hungarian army. The plan called for a broad front assault from the Sea of Azov to Kursk. Hitler's directive focused on securing the Caucasus oil fields and eliminating Soviet forces in the Voronezh region. The core strategy was relatively straightforward. The Germans aimed to quickly capture Voronezh and establish a bridgehead on the eastern bank of the Voronezh River. From there, their armored and mechanized forces would advance southward while other units attacked from the east. This coordinated movement intended to destroy Soviet armies caught in between, weakening the defenses of both Stalingrad and the Caucasus. The 4th Panzer Army swiftly advanced towards Voronezh as the chaotic Soviet retreat allowed the Germans to regain confidence for their upcoming major offensive. The Luftwaffe's close air support played a crucial role, disrupting and destroying defensive positions. The German generals were optimistic. Soviet troops had strategically positioned defenses like rivers and ravines, but German engineers were prepared to overcome these obstacles. At dawn, German reconnaissance units moved forward under a mist, followed by artillery fire and aerial bombings. They inflicted severe damage on Soviet positions and advanced swiftly. Upon reaching the Team River, they found destroyed bridges, but managed to cross using a rail bridge and overcame the defending Russians. The German advance was rapid along the entire front. Engineers reinforced bridges and created crossing points over ravines. As news of victories spread, General Hermann Hott prepared for the armored offensive. Two German Panzer Corps with hundreds of tanks were tasked with attacking the boundaries of the 40th and 13th Soviet armies. The Soviet forces were disorganized and suffered heavy losses from artillery, aerial attacks, and severed communications. Many defensive positions were obliterated, making coordination difficult. The German troops advanced with increasing confidence. Along the front, Under Werner Kempf's command, German divisions raced towards the Team River, encountering minimal resistance from the Russian defenders of the 160th and 212th Rifle Divisions. The Russian troops were easily overwhelmed. In the north, German forces achieved significant victories against Russian divisions, progressing according to their plan to encircle and destroy Soviet forces west of the Don River. General Golikov requested tank reinforcements to counter the losses sustained by the 40th Army. In response, Tank corps were ordered to support the defense, and two tank corps prepared for a counterattack against the expected German advance. The 11th Panzer Division pushed the 16th Tank Corps near the Kashen River to a retreat, while the 48th Panzer Corps established bridgeheads to the south. Elements of the 24th Panzer Division attacked and scattered the 6th Rifle Division, obtaining valuable intelligence. Meanwhile, the Hungarian army faced resistance from the Soviet 45th Rifle Division. On the right flank, the 13th Army, supported by the 1st Tank Corps, occupied positions. Soviet armored attacks faced difficulties due to poor coordination and command. The Germans easily dismissed the Soviet assaults along the front. Despite numerical superiority in tanks, the Soviet forces struggled to utilize their combined forces effectively. Hence, 
Stalin ordered another armored attack to stop the German advance. Good progress. Tank battles raged between German and Soviet forces. The counterattack ended in failure due to command and control issues. The 1st Tank Corps and Publican's 16th Tank Corps suffered setbacks, while Mischulin's 4th Tank Corps was defeated by Hauenschild's panzers. In parallel, the German 6th Army launched an assault surrounding Soviet forces. The successive defeats forced the Soviets to retreat and establish a new defensive line along rivers. Relentlessly, the Germans shattered the Soviet plans. Near Voronezh, the Soviets were determined to hold the city. Stalin recognized its importance and reinforced the defenses. However, the situation to the south deteriorated for the Soviets, with armies in disarray and encircled by German forces. Reserve armies were ordered to move forward. As the battle progressed, Soviet forces adopted a stronger stance, engaging the Germans fiercely, who encountered unexpected resistance. The outcome of the battle remained uncertain, as both sides fought for control and the Soviets sought to establish defensive positions. The fighting in Voronezh was brutal. The Soviets held fortified positions that had to be taken in close combat. Despite heavy casualties, the battalion struggled to achieve its objective. However, First Lieutenant Fritz Schultz took matters into his own hands, leading his company to assault guns and attacked the Soviets from unexpected directions, catching them off guard. The rest of the battalion captured the hill, although Schultz himself was severely wounded. Still, German forces facing Voronezh encountered stubborn resistance from the retreating Soviet armies. As the Russians slipped away, it became essential for Holt's armored divisions to push south along the Don River to cut off their escape route. The Drive In Berlin, Hitler realized that capturing Voronezh might not be necessary for the success of the operation. The decision to move Holt's armored forces south was left to Field Marshal von Bock. Capturing Voronezh became of secondary importance, as it would free up Hoth's 4th Panzer Army to move southward. On July 3rd, German forces had the advantage in the Voronezh sector, despite increasing Soviet resistance. Army corps made progress toward the Don River. However, von Bock hesitated, and the 4th Panzer Army and 2nd Army continued with their original orders on July 4th, and despite Soviet reinforcements arriving, the drive toward Voronezh persisted. The Großdeutschland Division encountered obstacles near the Don River. They paused to construct a new bridge and noticed enemy troop movements across the river. Attempts to capture a railroad bridge were met with heavy resistance. Further south, the 24th Panzer Division established bridgeheads across the Don and repelled Soviet attacks. Soviet defenses in Voronezh were stretched thin, with limited reinforcements available. The 13th Army to the north and the 40th Army to the south couldn't spare any troops. The 53rd and 75th fortified regions between the Don and Voronezh rivers defended the area west of Voronezh. By July 5th, elements of the 4th Panzer Army reached the Don River near Voronezh and engaged in a battle for the city. The Soviets, expecting the main German thrust toward Moscow, rushed reinforcements to hold Voronezh at all costs. Taking the lead. The defenders consisted of immobile troops in fortified positions, supported by undermanned NKVD units and elements of the 3rd Air Defense Division. The German 24th Panzer Division encountered difficulties in capturing a railroad bridge, but found a lightly guarded road bridge and used it to launch an attack. The Soviet forces strategically retreated towards the Don River, trading land for time. On July 5th, they launched a counterattack northwest of Voronezh, led by the 5th Tank Army. However, the movement of Soviet armor was hampered by air harassment and communication issues. Meanwhile, the German Panzer Corps encountered resistance but continued to advance toward Voronezh, resulting in house-to-house -house fighting in the city. The narrow streets limited the mobility of German tanks, requiring motorized infantry units to take the lead. On the northern front, the Soviet forces faced communication challenges, but managed to launch an attack against the 11th Panzer Division using T-34 tanks with strong frontal armor. Major General Pavel Alexeyevich Romistrov, commander of the 7th Tank Corps, launched a surprise attack that caught the Germans off guard, causing them to retreat quickly. 
the close proximity of the Russian forces hindered German operations and limited Luftwaffe support. The battle raged until nightfall, but the Russians could have dealt a more significant blow if their initial brigades had been reinforced. Two tank corps, with over 180 tanks each, were en route to the battle. Tied down. On July 7th, Remistrov received orders to continue the attack, but the arrival of Basler's 9th Panzer Division, equipped with around 120 tanks, temporarily halted Remistrov's progress. In Voronezh, German forces cleared the remaining resistance pockets, but were exhausted. A day later, Remistrov launched a full-scale attack on von Langemann's corps. The numerically superior Soviet forces pushed the Germans into a retreat. They had to establish a defensive line near the Sukhaya River, utilizing the swampy terrain and receiving Luftwaffe support. The Soviets made minor gains, but were ultimately haunted by German counterattacks. Both sides grew weary, and the front northwest of Voronezh stabilized. Logistical difficulties plagued the Germans by July 11th, slowing their advance. Fuel shortages hindered the German 6th Army, and the Luftwaffe's transport fleet flew in supplies to sustain the troops. The situation remained challenging with German units recovering fuel from damaged vehicles and leaving tanks and fuel-consuming vehicles behind. Even through these challenges, the Luftwaffe delivered 200 tons of fuel daily. Despite the success of the battle, Hitler and von Buck disagreed on the next steps, leading to a heated debate. The ongoing Soviet counterattacks and the 4th Panzer Army being tied down further frustrated Hitler, who dismissed von Buck on July 17th. Although the Germans secured bridgeheads across the Don and Voronezh rivers, strong Soviet defenses prevented further eastward movement. Stalin's decision to hold Voronezh disrupted the German plan to encircle Soviet forces west of the Don. The surviving Soviet divisions, reinforced and joined by new units, countered the German attempt to dominate Stalingrad, eventually halting the invasion and achieving victory in defense of their motherland. <laughs>